sun weather experts yesterday. This is going to be very important during the tribulation every single last one of us are going to experience. If I were to advise anybody of anything physical, it would be first. Make sure you understand who you are. Because only the Lord will intercede for you in this one. Prepare for what you thought would never come. Prepare to live in an ash environment. Prepare to function with an increase in insecurity of things hitting your home. Prepare to live away from the sun. In other words, to avoid it. Prepare for the crust of cracks and the degradation of highways. Some of the interstates are going to be completely cut off. Hmm? Prepare for civil unrest as men begin to lose their minds. Right? Because some of the expected events in the future prior to what we're actually looking for. Here's what can potentially happen. Can I give you just a quick, quick synopsis? Europe, England, Russia, Mideast war. I'd say within the next two years, within the next two years. Governmental control mechanisms will be put in place within the next year for Germany. Same thing will happen within the USA at least, not more than two years. Not more than two years. Britain will have a problem with fire and terrorism within the next year. The Hayward Fault will likely go probably within the next five years. That's the Hayward Fault. Super volcanic eruptions will actually be stimulated this year going into 2017 so i'd give them about five years ash environment with black ash within the next three years within the next three years super storms are already beginning but they will actually become stronger and stronger um, during the during the well from now to 2017 food shortages are already taking place and they will no longer be able to hide it and that will reach a, that, that's going to reach a, a very high point, a, a noticeable point, probably about March of next year. Hail damage is going to increase significantly because of atmospheric conditions. They will manifest unusually large hail. Right? Right now, we have a chain of thunderstorms that is spanning all the way to from New Brunswick down to Texas. That's very slight, considering the moisture formations that we're looking at is only 2% complete. What happens when it reaches 50% completion? And that is to say, we're talking about ocean currents, evaporation, and everything else. See, when the Lord said in Matthew 24, right? Don't be afraid at the end of the world. I'm, I'm, let me, can I put something else in context for you guys? Because this should never... You shouldn't take this lightly. He said, when Jesus said, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars, right? He said, he said, see that ye not be troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. In other words, he said, don't be troubled. It's not the end. Don't be troubled at all. These things have to happen. He mentioned a bunch of other things and he always teaches us never to be troubled. It does not mean this is no big deal. There will be earthquakes and floods in diverse places. Let me give you something on floods. We have too much potential in the storm systems that we have now. The rainfall is going to be a disastrous thing. I, within myself, my, my little tiny mind, I can foresee a time when Everybody gets nervous when they hear the word thunderstorm. Imagine that. I can see a hypercane forming. 
and one could actually form and we're looking at the development ba these are based on models this is not prophecy it's based on models it, there's one that has a potential has at least a 30 plus percent chance of a hypercane before this year is out in the wrong season a hypercane we're speaking of a category five wind speeds hurricane near 200 miles an hour but a storm as big as australia a hurricane the size of australia imagine that see the problem with that is this if it forms it can only follow certain tracks because it will begin to degrade if it comes over landfall so if it follows these tracks that modeling is predicting if one hit say north america the entire country would be affected if one hit, for instance, South America, we're going to lose Mexico. If one hit, for instance, Africa, it will reverse the jet stream. And flooding will be absolute. See, a hypercane can only be a hypercane because of the moisture content. And because we have atmospheric compression, and we discussed this three years ago, the atmosphere will be able to sustain and hold much more pressure than normal. Now, if it can hold much more pressure than normal, right? Then we're looking at rainfalls that are outrageous. <sighs> and this could be a problem for everybody. You know what happens right now? In the thunderstorms you're going to see, you will see hail, and, and last year I believe it was, I discussed that hail the size of grapefruits is coming because the winds will sustain the hail formations, right? It's coming. Now, if that happens, infrastructure will be lost from a hailstorm. Houses will be damaged. There's, you can't stop that type of hail from damaging something. All these people with the tin roofs, it's just gonna make a lot of noise, but it'll begin to just tear off people's roofs, you know. It, it'll be massive damage, and it takes very strong winds to produce a larger hail. Updrafts of unbelievable strength to form that size hail. And we know that hail has been increasing in size this year alone significantly. That's a lot of damage, a lot of cars lost, a lot of roads messed up and everything else. And these are just natural things, right? Natural things. And again, I'll say it again, when the harp facilities are destroyed, all of them, well, you know it's not harp. You'll know it's not them. In fact, they're gonna become very nervous with outdoor equipment in the first place. Haven't you noticed you guys that live near bases? They've been moving stuff inside buildings, inside these, there, there are new type buildings that they have to withstand large debris falling on top. Haven't you noticed this? The construction methods have changed. They must be able to sustain debris coming down out of the sky. Many of the sensitive Equipment and labs have long been moved in the earth. Long been moved in the earth. All the posts that you see that are operational, they have had drastic changes. But they can also pick up and leave within a day's time. Why do you think NATO's in a rush? Right? Why do you think everybody's holding back like they are? because they don't know, they don't know the full implications of what it's about to be, but we know this. They're gonna hide themselves in the mountains and the rocks. They're gonna say, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? They will say this because the armies will be gone. We learn through Isaiah 34, before the skies roll together, before the stars of heaven fall to earth, right? 
like a fig tree, that all the armies of the earth are utterly destroyed. Utterly destroyed. If they're utterly destroyed, and this guy has run into the, the time of great tribulation that God said, Jesus said that if he had not cut that time short, no flesh would have been saved. And that's why when we read Matthew 24, we will read and it will state specifically immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken immediately after the tribulation of those days, the troubles of those days. Now we know that during the time that the stars fall to earth, the sky rolls together as a scroll. After all these events, it's going to be hopeless in the world. But prior to this happening, there is massive tribulation on the earth. And you're right in the middle of it. And many of you will sit there and say, I'm not going to be part of it. Listen, if you're alive today, you're already part of it. What if it starts in two minutes? You're not going anywhere. Nobody went anywhere in World War I, World War II, 1920. The only way people got out during these calamitous times, even when the volcanoes were erupting, even those who have been involved in massive uh, 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 natural events like tsunamis and everything else, see, we've got to stop doing that. We're getting too close to, you know, we're believing Hollywood. Your imagination runs wild on you because the reference that most people have came from Hollywood. It does not come from truth. The only way it can come from truth is if you have experienced the event. Otherwise, you're getting your visual imagery from Hollywood. But you're going to be here during this time. There are a lot of people moved to make preparations for the time of trouble. Not for the time of the end. Uh-oh, see, I just messed people up there. You thought the time of trouble is the time of the end. No, the day of the Lord is bad, but prior to the day of the Lord, worse, I mean, bad things are upon the earth. Let me read, let me further qualify something. Jesus says immediately, uh, Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven um, will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear a sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. Now they, we, tribulation comes first, right? Uh-oh, see, that messed some people up right there. There is a tribulation so bad that if God did not cut the time short, no flesh would have been saved. So guess what? Prior to the gathering, prior to the time in 2 Thessalonians, a great trouble will have come upon the earth. Do you know this? That day shall not come. Lest there come a falling away first and that man of perdition be revealed. A falling away must happen. The abomination of desolation must be set up. And then those days will come. Is everybody following me? So what's about to happen right now? Hmm? What's about to happen right now? You're in the middle of it. You're seeing the transition. It's a social transition. And that means war and massive geological changes in the earth and atmospheric changes in the earth. I've heard people talk about wormwood. I've heard people talk about many things. I'm going to show, I'm going to, I'm going to share something with you already. There's a body of water that is so acidic that if you put a Coke can in there, it will dissolve it in two minutes. Sulfur spewing out all over the place. It's in the water. The water's pH is 1.25, something like that. It is so acidic. It'll burn your leg off if you keep your leg in that water. It is bitter, right? There's another event that's happening. They've been doing collections of what's coming into the atmosphere. 
The water will soon look like a, the blood of a dead person. It will stink and breathe pestilence you wouldn't believe. You will not be able to drink the water because the water is soured. And if you drink that water, in, because you have bismuth in your stomach, it will draw all that bismuth out. It will make your stomach feel like it's in a billion knots. You will regurgitate very quickly. This is happening already, and it's building up. So these end-time events are building up. That means we're looking at water contamination. So, of course, they're going to draw all the fresh water out that they can and store it into safe containers. No, they're not going to let the public know, because if the public knew, anybody, somebody would have to come forward and give explanation and accountability for what's happening. Well, that just opens up a new pile of worms. That won't happen. Stop looking for explanations and don't demand one, because if you demanded an explanation, you would never sleep well in your bed again. It's not good to know everything. It's good to know the word of the Lord. You're going to see enough of it if you're meant to do so. We also have to remember that in this time, the inhabitants of the earth are few. Many people died before this great trouble ended. Before the stars of heaven fell, before the sky rolled together as a scroll. Right? So we may as well say that prior to the sixth seal, many people died. Can we say that way? Many people died prior to the sixth seal. Right? As it is in the context of the reading. Now remember, John saw visions. He saw visions. He was shown things. Right? He was shown things. Now I believe this. I do believe that the seals... When it says seal one, two, three, four, and so on, I can I can see the truth of the numerical values. I see the trumpets, the first angel sounding, the second angel sounding, the third angel sounding. Spiritually, you can see the truth of those things also. Matthew is a key to understanding the entire matter. Because Jesus used words like, and then after that. And after that, when you see those words of what Jesus said, well, then you begin to see what's actually taking place, right? In the atmosphere right now, right, are small microbial life forms. How many of you know that life is thriving in our stratosphere? It's floating up there, but that those things are deadly. How many of you know that? They're deadly. But they're in the stratosphere. They just float around, right? In the stratosphere. Often when a meteor penetrates our atmosphere, they are knocked out straight to the earth. They normally reside above the cloud level. They're right there where you can hardly, where there's, I mean, they're, they're right at the edge of the stratosphere and the mesosphere. They're right at the edge. They can withstand extremely cold temperatures and extremely hot temperatures. They don't need oxygen like you do. They're microbes, but they're deadly. How many of you know that the ice, the, the 75% of the fresh water, where does that come from? How many of you know where that comes from? 75% of the fresh water of Earth is where? Can anybody tell me where? Anybody? Tell me where it is? Hmm? In the glaciers. That's where it is. That's a lot in the glaciers, right? In fact, if, if all the glaciers were to melt all at one time, the sea level would go up. 260 to 300 feet. Now, these are naval findings. Now, this is not from this climate stuff, which I just don't buy that, <clears throat> because Mars is having climate troubles too, right? And, and it's not from cow farts. It's not what it's from. It's not from that. It's not from what you think it's from. And it's so stupid that people buy this. Let me tell you why. I, it take, for instance, there's an island that use a straw and they burn the straw which emits what carbon back into the atmosphere they burn the straw for heating for heating water and things of that nature right but listen the straw that grows consumes the carbon 
they harvest the straw and burn it, it releases the same amount of carbon it consumes. Correct? Correct? You have a car that burns fuel. The carbon goes in the atmosphere with some other elements and things of that nature. But it can never compare to uh, volcanism and what it releases minute to minute. Uh, Oh, and by the way, and by the way, the oceans absorb all that carbon back up again and it goes back down into that chain into plankton and everything else. Oh, and by the way, some of the plant life they found out, there's a type of tree that sucks in so much carbon and its roots and that carbon, that uh, carbon is spread throughout the other life in the ground and they come to find out there are a lot of life forms in the earth that consume carbon. So it's all balanced, not out of control. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. But the truth is this, the earth, the weather on the earth is changing. The weather on Mars is changing. The sun's weather is changing. Who's on the sun with highways? Oh, better tax him, better give him a carbon tax. I can understand pollutants in the air. I can understand that, right? I even know why they they, they are, are spraying aluminum or metallic particles in the atmosphere. I understand why. I do, I understand why. And it has side effects, yes it does. But I understand the radiation on the sun is quite different than what it used to be. They needed a perfect balance. I understand also that there's still demon entities in this earth. Right? They already know they can't do anything spiritually against you. But if you ever give up, your body's already prepared to receive one of these things. I know that much. So they do a lot of things by the unction of dreams and having seances. How many of you know that, uh, you know, would it surprise you all to know that just about every president we've ever had attends seances? I mean, all of them. Every single last one of them. Would that shock you or surprise you? Would it surprise you to know that CERN's, the idea of CERN began in India? But it began a long time ago. I, I believe it's uh, the, the uh, oh my Lord, you, you would just be shocked. I mean, they were playing with radio messages and everything else in the 1800s. Would it shock you to know that electromagnetism is the only thing that causes your brain to stabilize and that without it, you're going to go loopy and the only thing you'll have left is, is the spirit. Do you know that most of the mental influences negative that we have in the earth right now is, is some of it is physical. It's not all what you think it is, some of it is physical. Some of it's caused through by chemical imbalance. And that chemical imbalance is a release of hormones in the wrong, at the wrong times. And your hormones and everything else in your physiology is tied to what? To the natural forces in the earth. Did you know that they found out that Russians, when the Russian cosmonauts went out there in space, right? They went outside the Earth. Uh, they, they got very close to a spot that was hardly covered by the uh, magnetosphere. That all their neurological connections began to break. When they came back down to Earth, their condition was irreversible. They acted like animals. They were trying to bite the other people. They went. They were. They were just gone in the head, and they really were like um, uh, animals with rabies. I mean, they were vicious. So from that moment on, guess what they did? They said, we've got to replicate the Earth's magnetic shielding in the equipment before we send anybody up. That's the only way they can be out there. Without the magnetic shield of the Earth, people revert back to an animalistic behavior. Isn't that spooky? So if anything happens to our shields, the magnetosphere of the Earth, the, the last thing people are going to think about is, uh, well, 
What about my preparations? No, their, their neurological connections are going to start breaking and they're going to turn into animalistic beasts. Which could be why the Bible says one person will eat the flesh of another. And that's actually in the Bible. I know some people haven't met that. You haven't read that, right? How many people know that's in the Bible? I mean, in context, I, these people have gone absolutely bonkers by this time. And of course, this is when Jesus is talking, or not Jesus, but it was speaking about the end times. I'm sorry, Jesus didn't say this. This was uh, specifically given to one of the prophets concerning the end times. They were going to a type of man as they would begin to eat the flesh of another. So I would say something is going to happen to our magnetosphere, which is why, this is why I think, when that angel poured his vial into the sun, there was nothing to stop the radiation from reaching the surface of the earth, which scorched men bad. Because if we have a strong magnetosphere and the sun puts out a solar, a solar flare, our shielding is so resilient, it could really absorb the entire thing. Right, really could. At a moment of weakness, they also found during the Carrington event that the shielding of the earth, which is also tracked through rock and other means, was down at its lowest point. And that's a, during the Carrington event, something happened to our shield. And there have been what they call micro collapses of the magnetosphere. You ever go outside, you're, as soon as the sun touches your skin, you feel a stinging on your skin. You ever feel that? It's, it's a sting that you feel on your skin. Normally this happens in areas based on the magnetosphere's ability, right? To divert or block charged particles. If they get through, your skin starts to sting immediately. So guess what? Without the magnetosphere, you're going to be cooked in less than 30 seconds you go out there in the sun. There was a place where the ozone had just totally left. And it was in one of the poles, and it was a no-go zone. If you walked out there in that zone, you were smacked with microwaves and x-rays, right? It was a no-go zone because it was killing people. If you were exposed for 10 seconds, you'd never, you'd never live. And these were just holes in the ozone, the real holes in the ozone, not the garbage they report to you. Because a hole in the ozone is serious. Oh, and six more magnetars likely went off and will be here soon. See, in 2004, when the one magnetar swiped a piece of our atmosphere, and by the way, 2004 is a key date. You all, you should know this. When that magnetar went off, that's when all the global warming stuff took off too. Why did the global warming stuff come off or start coming out like that? Because they had to prepare for the rest of the magnetars and some other things that are coming through. That one took off part of the atmosphere, took it off. We lost volume out of the atmosphere. And the climate began to change from 2004 forward. Not because of cow farts, but because of the magnetar. That's why. All this began in 2004. And they didn't know what they were going to do. Now, prior to that time in 2004, it was theorized this could happen and they began to try and protect themselves then then when it happened in 2004 they found out their detection methods were right so then the other ones that went off out there will be here following 2004 isn't that something so there are other magnetar bursts that are going to take place now i can tell you this that one in 2004 was tiny. The other ones are not tiny. Even, even the uh, key scientists will tell you one of the greatest threats of the known universe is a magnetar to them because it can take the entire atmosphere off. It can blow away the atmosphere. In fact, the signatures are already they're finding on Mars that look like a magnetar blew the, the atmosphere of Mars off. It barely touched us in 2004, but the other ones that have gone off are much bigger. Imagine a little ball in space 11 miles wide and a centimeter crack forms 
causes a magnetar 52 light years away, hits the Earth and knocks off a portion of the atmosphere. Imagine that. In 2004, they, they were, their suspicions were confirmed right, but there are other ones that have already gone off. They've been counting down the days till they get here. And the worst of them, well, let's just say that uh, we're about to experience a lot of activity that has happened in our solar system. And there's nothing anybody can do to stop it, right? There's Zippo they can do, which almost lets you know it says men's hearts failing them for fear for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. Well, guess what? To look after those things which are coming upon the earth, you have to know about them. And to know about those things that are coming upon the earth, you have to have studied them. You also have to have had an example for them. Yes, it could, BP. They found out there's a type of, uh, there's a type of pulsing type magnetar. It, it's not quite a magnetar, but it pulses in these um, intervals, like it'll build up, explode, build up again, explode. It's in a binary system, and this thing goes off in intervals. And every time it goes off, they have matched it to something else. That's all I can say. That's what I'll say. You can put the rest together. But it, it blows up in intervals, right? These objects are tiny, but so massive in gravity, it's mind-blowing. And when you have one in a dual system where they persistently fight for power and it's revolving, well, then you're looking at a pulse being ejected from somewhere in the solar system, and it's cyclical, and it's very dangerous, and nothing can escape it. Nothing can escape it. It's, it's like a clock piece, right? That's already timed. It's like an alarm clock that's about to go off and nobody can change it. And it's even like Jesus is telling us, hey, this time is coming. It's coming. See, so when you begin to think in these terms, I'm telling you the truth. All the Hollywood movies... They don't compare. If you've seen the most horrible disasters in Hollywood movies or even on Earth, they do not compare to the truth. The truth is unimaginable. They're playing with things. And, and they're exploring things in CERN, right? That allow them to extract energy from another dimension. How many of you know that? They have already extracted quite a bit of, of cubicle energy from another dimension. It has no traces of energy in this dimension. They're dealing with much heavier particles that work in ways you wouldn't quite comprehend. Certainly if you're into electronics and you know about positive and negative, there is no positive and negative there. And everything is almost reversed. So it's, it's quite weird. So they're finding out the properties in this through, through various means. But if our magnetosphere goes, so is the veil gone, because see, your eyes may open all the way up. The, you won't be able to tell the difference between a dream and reality. So that means a lot of people are going to be scared to death. Imagine being caught in a nightmare and you don't wake up. Hmm? Imagine. Just imagine. You, you remember your nightmares, right? You remember when you woke up and you said, Whew, I'm glad that was a dream. And you had to, it took you half a day to get yourself together. Right? You ever have a dream that stayed on your mind for a few days and it kind of made your day dark because the dream was just not good at all? And it made your day dark. It changed your reality. So imagine a time without the safety blocks between the dream world and this world. And by the way, the greatest of scientists do not believe a dream is a dream. See, they perceive things. They know things you don't know. We call them spiritual. They call them something else. They know it's real. You think it's a construct. They interact with it on the opposite spectrum. They believe in the thing you should believe in. You should know it's real. You should walk in your authority. You should. They know it's real. And they're using that to their advantage over you. While they make you doubt and challenge your faith... They absolutely believe 
in Lucifer, the demons that manifest in all those different places, and that's why they have power over people. They have power over people because they believe the truth, but that truth is in the dark side. So they have been collaborating and working with it. And here we are as Christians trying to believe these things are real, like our authority. No, it's time for you to know that it's real by examining the truth for the sake of truth. We need not walk in this world with our eyes shut. Jesus came to give sight to the blind. And we were blind. So don't turn away from what you see. Begin to understand it. You have authority. You have real authority. You don't have to say a bunch of incantations for that authority to exist. All you need to do is say yes to your Lord. And in order to say yes, you have to know his mandates. Liz, Liz says, does the second wave of energy start this week? Liz, we there have already been experiences when I'm when last year when I told you guys it would be preceded by particles of radiation that scientists would try to explain to everybody, right? Well, they have been. They've been putting out little articles. Hey, we detected radioactive dust here and radioactive dust there coming out of the blue, right? Don't don't buy that. Stuff's not coming out of the blue. They're saying, hey, we've discovered storms on this planet and that planet. Don't do that because amateur astronomers are going to be able to see these storms. And so they have to tell people about it so that it's not perceived outside of their own paradigm they set for the world. So what they're doing is defining everything before you capture it yourselves. But the effect is still going to be what the effect is. No one is sure what the exact effects will be but i can tell you this this wave coming through is destructive it is harmful whether or not we have a straight on blow i don't know i don't know i know it's bad because there have been other objects in the way of it that have been cooked and they didn't have an atmosphere they didn't have a magnetosphere right our magnetosphere is what protects us from charged particles the stuff that's coming at us are charged particles and lots of x-rays and they're not emitting from the sun but here's the part that concerns everybody who knows about this is that how is it going to affect the sun if our shielding is up great but how is it going to affect the sun because if it affects the sun there's only so much we can take the earth can take right so how will that affect the sun and then wouldn't you know it ultraviolet light is a trigger for electrons and protons. How many of you know that? You'd be shocked at what ultraviolet light can do, can do to your electronics. Ultraviolet light will affect your electronics because your electronics contain gold. And ultraviolet light can do something to any electrons passing through gold. And you don't even know it. So in the light spectrum, if UV begins to penetrate because of the sun, your electronics are going to go haywire. Now, normally people won't even put that together. They're looking for an EMP, but they have forgotten about ultraviolet light discovered a long time ago in somebody's lab when they were playing with cameras, right? And they were playing with electricity. They found out that ultraviolet light is a booster of the wrong type. I mean, a severe booster. It can cause your computer, instead of operating from 3 volts or 5 in the processor, to kick all the way up to 500 with twice the amperage. Because UV, UV photons, those energy packets, can be changed or transformed into almost like nitrogen for electrons. In other words, they will make the electrons move a lot faster. That's an increase in current and voltage potential, right? So you have a higher voltage potential. 
about a thousand times more amperage, and now you're in trouble because your equipment could fry very easily, very easily with that. Now that's just UV light. So if it gets to a certain strength, now it works at a certain strength, not just any UV light. It works at a certain strength, right? So we're looking at all these variables, and it's it's really difficult to tell what the absolute outcome will be. One thing I do know, whatever's ordained will take place, whether we like it or not. But still, I say this, the only true way to prepare for this, because if we lose everything electronic, well, then we lose it. But what does that have to do with us? How's your walk with the Lord going to be? Because... What's about to happen is not conventional either. You're going to deal in an environment with a fluctuating magnetosphere. Spiritual entities all over the place. The morale of mankind severely dropped. Therefore, violence has increased in the earth. And you have to be stationary. Now listen, this is prior to the sixth seal. Are you guys comprehending this? This is the great trouble I'm speaking of. Because the tribes of the earth mourn in Matthew 24... And the angels go and gather, right, the elect after the troubles of that day, of, of, that, of that time, the tribulation. So don't you think we need to find out and know everything that happens during this time that we won't be shaken in our boots by it? Because it says specifically in the word of God, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth. And then it tells you, it says, nations in distress with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. So it's almost telling us that the weather phenomena is going to get so bad that it will undo the plans of all nations. Listen, the nations will fail. The Illuminati will fail. The beast system is going to fail. Though it will be given a specific time of power, the beast system will, but it will ultimately fail. All these secret societies, everybody likes to deify, they too will fail. Now, after they fail, where will you be? Because you can't point at them and say it's their fault anymore. When the trouble, here's what I need to get everybody. I, I just want you in this mindset. I want you in this mindset because I know it's unhealthy and against the word of God to be in any other mindset than this. That when all these things were moved out of the way, you need to contemplate who you're going to be. And whoever you're going to be, you need to be that individual now. You can't say, oh, I'm going to walk around blessing everybody when that time comes. No, if you're not doing it now, that's not who you're going to become. The only person you will become is the individual you practice being right now. Those who stand for the Lord right now in all, you can't stand for the Lord halfway. I can't stand for him halfway. I can't bless one person and curse another. I can't have both blessings and curses coming out of my mouth. Who I am today is who I will be. Because if the Lord came right now, whatever's against you from him that you have at this moment is against you. Do you understand that you are? You are only who you can be right now. Stop thinking of tomorrow is what I want you to And You need to see that. Don't say to yourself, I'm going to be okay in the end. If you don't want to follow what he's saying now, you need to understand that you walk in authority. Stop complaining about your sickness and walk past it. I'm telling you the truth. Your ability, your ability to execute those things Jesus gave you to execute are real. You can walk right out of your sickness. You can wake up out of your slumber. You can begin working right now and nothing will hinder you. Your body can be reshaped in the twinkling of an eye. You can be restored based upon your purpose. Now, if you have no purpose, you're going to have ailments. As soon as you're purposed, you will get up 
And when you get up with a purpose, you will begin to walk. And when you begin to walk, you're going to walk right out of that old creature. With, By the way, it is the old man who has all the problems, not the new creature in Christ. Do you see how that works? So that if something is on you from what you previously were, just keep walking, it will fall off. It does not belong to you, nor can it stay with you. Do you all understand that? It's like walking with clothing that's not zipped up, buttoned up, or fastened in very high winds. You just keep walking in the way of the wind, and the clothes will come off. Never take your eyes off of the Lord. And when you have thoughts enter into your head that tell you, you can't do this or that, and your Lord said you could do this or that, you cast down those thoughts. You take captive those thoughts. You refuse to give in to them. If anger creeps into you, know that it itself is a portal to demons. And you say, not here. This is holy ground. That's what you say. And allow nothing unholy to entertain you. Nothing. Not television. Not a person's words. Let nothing unholy entertain you. The only entertainment you should have is the truth, the light, and the way. And his name is Jesus of Nazareth. For every moment you spend with earthly entertainment, you'll have other moments you wish you had something that you saw. All of your reality and desires, most of them have been formed through entertainment. You want what you saw. Break that cycle off of your life. Some of you just need to just turn your televisions off. Some of you need to severely back away from social media and see who you are. You need to fight through a time where you fast from the world. And go into the word of God and refuse to let go till you come out with him I'm telling you the truth I certainly had to do it you, you all think it was easy for me to, to uh, you have no idea you don't understand because listen the better things are for you in your life the worse it is for your soul you just really don't understand there's sometimes you really have to struggle through so many things in your life and it's not a common struggle it's not a great thing either it's as simple as saying no but I'm telling you now it's not so easy to say no sometimes you have to fast from those things that get in your way if something gets in your way of you believing in your father you need to cut it loose for a while cut it loose better for you to cut that loose and that your soul be saved or enter into hell with that thing you should have cut loose all this happens isn't that something all this is prior to the sixth seal the great trouble beyond the sixth seal this is and so if you can understand this and comprehend this all this happens prior to the sixth seal then you will comprehend chapter 7. Because if the great trouble has already come, if the sixth seal is opening, and by the way, Jesus comes with the indignation. Did you know that? He comes with the indignation. So at this point, your Lord is coming. How about that? Your Lord is on the way. But you will have gone through so very much. And it's beginning now. It's really beginning now. That's why I'm getting... There are certain things I just don't get excited about. I certainly don't get excited about doctrine. I have no doctrine. <clears throat> I really don't. And if I did have one, it's stupid. Because it comes from a earthly point of view. And so it has to be stupid. Right? <laughs> but there is a truth... Because in fact, you're in the middle of something. Many people are, are, are look at Revelation saying it's going to happen in the future. If that were the case, 
then there's something in here that's a lie. The opening statement, which says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. You see, I happen to believe that all these words from Revelation are relevant to us. Because everything foreshadows. Have you ever noticed God foreshadows every big event? Have you ever noticed that? Jesus was foreshadowed with how they operated with the temple. Did you notice that? The sacrifices foreshadowed Christ. Did you see that? Therefore, everything in Revelation is foreshadowed by everything that's happening in your life. In fact, as we continue to go through Revelation, you're going to see it in your own life. That you have faced just about everything in Revelation. And what you will not face or have not faced, you can warn those and tell those who come after you. You can surely tell them. Because if you don't, isn't that blood going to be on your hands? Hmm? You've got to tell them. If you believe in this, you will tell them. You will absolutely tell them. But the time is at hand. The time is happening, which means you're in the middle of it. You're part of one of these churches, and these churches had issues. The church is the, it, the church, the golden candlesticks, right? They had no blemishes on there. Did you notice that? They, they didn't have any blemishes. You belong to one of those candlesticks, whether it be the messenger of the candlestick, right? That Christ holds in his right hand whether you be one of the body. In either case, you have to adhere to these seven churches and what Jesus said was and was not pleasing to him and make adjustments in your life. You're not immune from that, right? Okay? They're candlesticks. Kind of like the two, well, there are two other candlesticks mentioned. Uh-oh, see, now we're getting somewhere. The two church, the seven churches, are candlesticks. Well, there are some other candlesticks also that have a job to do. They have a job. But ladies and gentlemen, in fact, it says these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. That's, that's uh, Revelation 11.4, just so you know. I just want to tell you that. Candlesticks is mentioned again. And we know what those candlesticks are, right? So wouldn't it pay you to know about the characteristics of them? Make corrections in your life so that you don't walk with a conscience that's half and half. Some of you get depressed because you could have done something and you did not. Do you know that? Some of you feel defeated because you could have done something and you didn't. If the Lord impresses upon you to go into his word and read and you don't do it, your day is incomplete. How many of you have found this out? In other words... You're going to feel that way until you accomplish what you've been called to accomplish. Because only when you accomplish those things inspired by the Holy Spirit upon your life, do you have any type of completeness. And nothing will satisfy that type of work that you have to do in the world. You can't replace it with anything. You will either do the calling of the Lord or walk in this earth feeling doomed. And you know I'm telling you the truth. So then it takes a total conforming. To who you really are. Here's the simple part of it. The Lord only asked of you. To become. Who, you, who he made you to be. Right. Not for you to become what you think you are. Because we start out in life. Thinking that we're many things. We thought that we would never see. Any of these events happen in our lifetime. We were wrong. And so were the ministers before us. Wrong. We thought that that guy that fell on his horse hit his head on the rock, and he's the one that began this rapture, um, the rapture word itself. How many of you know that? He did. He hit his head on the rock, had a dream about a wedding. He woke up, and he started talking about the rapture and wrote it down. And then when you know it, I think it was six years later, he said the rapture was going to happen, and it didn't. Sixteen years later, he said it was going to happen on that date, and it didn't. The same guy that came up with the word and the concept of rapture is the same individual who tricked people into believing that the rapture was going to come he did this i believe six times six times he did this there is a calling way of the saints right 
But you need to understand my truth of how that happens. What about the people who passed away today that were with the Lord? I can assure you they finished their walk. Their race is complete. What about your race? See, it's a trick for everybody to say, I'm not worried about any trouble because the Lord is going to get me out of it. That's the wrong time. You were sent here in the middle of a big trouble. He sent you as sheep among wolves. And if you are in the mentality of getting out of everything, you will never fight. How many of you know that? You won't fight. You won't fight the good fight of faith for your brother and sister. You become complainers because you stayed here too long. You will gather a mindset saying, oh, I just wish I could leave. It is so ugly here. What do you mean it's so ugly? You were sent here in this place of darkness as a lamp. You will never become who you're supposed to be with a mindset that you're leaving before anything happens. You're not even willing to lay your life down for another. It's almost like some people are serving, saying, I'll serve so long as I don't get hurt. I'll serve so long as everything happens my way. There will be a rapture, just not in the timing of man. It'll be at the appointed timing of God for those who are alive at the end, at the last trump. Not the first trump, not the second trump, but the last trump. When the mystery is revealed, that was told to the servants, the prophets. Do you see how that works at the last trump? Now that's truth. And all those who don't go then, because it says those who are alive, that means many are going to die. And why are you so afraid of death? See, when you talk the truth, it exposes something within people. Now, I know people believe in the rapture. I know some people don't believe in the rapture. But I say this. Don't watch the clock. Be passionate about why you were sent here by accepting it first. You'll never be passionate about the Lord's will if you don't accept that he sent you here. Many people become passionate because they created their own vision and they think they're serving the Lord in their own vision, by their own way, within their own agendas and everything else. He sent you here not to save your life, but to lose your life. He sent you here to lose your life and to be saved. He sent you here to do a work. You are here to do a work. You're also in the middle of a war. You're also much more than what you think you are. You are, and because you have authority, be careful of what enters into your heart. Do not debate with demons. Speak truth even internally. Get out of the seat of the scornful. Stop judging people. You know what? Sometimes if you don't like people talking about you, stop talking about other people under your breath. If you don't like to be judged by other people, stop judging people in the world, even those that do wrong. Stop judging them. Live your life according to truth and truth will be your life. But if you accuse Satan is right there saying, well, they accused and by your own admission, Lord, you have to you have to let me choose someone to accuse them. And believe me, it happens at the wrong time. You can see those patterns. You can see God's his his laws at work. If you don't like it, don't do it, because if you do it, you too are guilty. If you judge, you too are guilty. If you accuse, you've been accused. The guilty can't call another person guilty. But you're called to walk very differently. And we're close. This earth is going to wear down a lot of people. The last thing I want to talk about, guys, is a lot of people are going to be wore out because of the events in the earth. Because of the weather in the earth. My Lord, get yourselves ready. And BP, we need your, we need you to uh, uh, respond to us here in the science team b before we get rolling, because we have to get ready to live in an ash environment, in a soggy environment, in a time of drought. It really is this past time for us to really begin to gather together, right?
I mean as in, in truth. But don't worry, you're going to get some motivational help from the events in the world. Now, don't you people get scared. Do not get scared. Please don't become scared. You're going to see some very forceful acts. They will, they will, they will enforce civil obedience. And they will punish those who are not obedient. And you're not going to know what's going to happen to them because it'll be too chaotic of a time. But you're seeing the beginnings, and I'm not talking about martial law. I'm talking about something in small steps. I'm talking about the people rebelling against the leaders. And then you will see. Keep yourself sober during these times. You cannot ever afford. Have you ever noticed? Now you feel, because of these storms, and they'll get worse, now you feel, oh Lord, I better pay attention to the weather phenomena. Because my house could be next to be flooded, right? Now you see that. You're also going to see the water rise on the coastlines. And then more things are going to come out. In fact, in fact, you're going to be driven crazy by people's advice and, and their explanations as to what's happening. They will continue to explain every single event until they run out of explanations. And they will run out of explanations, certainly when the red storms get here. Because that's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. Many of you will continue to notice a buildup when you're wiping your car windows off. Your, your, your paper towel or whatever it is is going to be totally red. But then when you begin to smell it, well, well then you know it's the right substance. Because you will begin to smell it. You will absolutely begin to smell it. It will not be dust either. It's not going to just be iron-rich dust. It's going to be something else. All right? With that, I'm going to say God bless you. I, within myself, my, my little tiny mind, I can foresee a time when everybody gets nervous when they hear the word thunderstorm. Imagine that. I can see a hypercane forming. And one could actually form, and we're looking at the development. Ba these are based on models. This is not prophecy. It's based on models. It, there's one that has a potential, has at least a 30 plus percent chance of a hypercane before this year is out in the wrong season. A hypercane. We're speaking of a category five wind speeds hurricane near 200 miles an hour but a storm as big as Australia a hurricane the size of Australia imagine that see the problem with that is this if it forms it can only follow certain tracks because it will begin to degrade if it comes over landfall so if it follows these tracks that modeling is predicting if one hit say North America the entire country would be affected if one hit, for instance, South America, we're going to lose Mexico. If one hit, for instance, Africa, it will reverse the jet stream. And flooding will be absolute. See, a hypercane can only be a hypercane because of the moisture content. And because we have atmospheric compression, and we discussed this three years ago, the atmosphere will be able to sustain and hold much more pressure than normal. Now, if it can hold much more pressure than normal, right? Then we're looking at rainfalls that are outrageous. <sighs> and this could be a problem for everybody. You know what happens right now? In the thunderstorms you're going to see, you will see hail, and, and last year I believe it was, I discussed that hail the size of grapefruits is coming because the winds will sustain the hail formations.
This is going to be very important during the tribulation every single last one of us are going to experience. If I were to advise anybody of anything physical, it would be first. Make sure you understand who you are. Because only the Lord will intercede for you in this one. Prepare for what you thought would never come. Prepare to live in a Nash environment. Prepare to function with an increase in insecurity of things hitting your home. Prepare to live away from the sun. In other words, to avoid it. Prepare for the crust of cracks and the degradation of highways. Some of the interstates are going to be completely cut off. Hmm? Prepare for civil unrest as men begin to lose their minds. Right? Because some of the expected events in the future prior to what we're actually looking for. Here's what can potentially happen. Can I give you just a quick, quick synopsis? Europe, England, Russia, Middle East war. I'd say within the next two years, within the next two years. Governmental control mechanisms will be put in place within the next year for Germany. Same thing will happen within the USA at least not more than two years. Not more than two years. Britain will have a problem with fire and terrorism within the next year. The Hayward Fault will likely go probably within the next five years. That's the Hayward Fault. Super volcanic eruptions, right? It's coming. Now, if that happens, infrastructure will be lost from a hailstorm. Houses will be damaged. There's, you can't stop that type of hail from damaging something. All these people with the tin roofs, it's just going to make a lot of noise, but it'll begin to just tear off people's roofs, you know. It, it'll be massive damage, and it takes very strong winds to produce a larger hail, updrafts of unbelievable strength to form that size hail. And we know that hail has been increasing in size this year alone significantly. That's a lot of damage. A lot of cars lost, a lot of roads messed up and everything else. And these are just natural things, right? Natural things. And again, I'll say it again, when the harp facilities are destroyed, all of them, well, you know it's not harp. You'll know it's not them. In fact, they're gonna become very nervous with outdoor equipment in the first place. Haven't you noticed you guys that live near bases? They've been moving stuff inside buildings, inside these, there, there are new type buildings that they have to withstand large debris falling on top. Haven't you noticed this? The construction methods have changed. They must be able to sustain debris coming down out of the sky. Many of the sensitive Equipment and labs have long been moved in the earth. Long been moved in the earth. All the posts that you see that are operational, they have had drastic changes. But they can also pick up and leave within a day's time. Why do you think NATO's in a rush? Right? Why do you think everybody's holding back like they are? Because they don't know, they don't know the full implications of what it's about to be. But we know this. They're going to hide themselves in the mountains, in the rocks. They're going to say, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come. And who shall be able to stand? They will say this because the armies will be gone. We learn through Isaiah 34, before the skies roll together, before the stars of heaven fall to earth, right? Like a fig tree, that all the armies of the earth are utterly destroyed utterly destroyed if they're utterly destroyed and this 
guy has run into the, the time of great tribulation that God said, Jesus said that if he had not cut that time short, no flesh would have been saved. And that's why when we read Matthew 24, we will read and it will state specifically immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken immediately after the tribulation of those days, the troubles of those days. Now we know that during the time that the stars fall to earth, the sky rolls together as a scroll. After all these events, it's going to be hopeless in the world. But prior to this happening, there is massive tribulation on the earth. And you're right in the middle of it. And many of you will sit there and say, I'm not going to be part of it. Listen, if you're alive today, you're already part of it. What if it starts in two minutes? You're not going anywhere. Nobody went anywhere in World War I, World War II, 1920. The only way people got out during these calamitous times, even when the volcanoes were erupting, even those who have been involved in massive uh, 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 natural events like tsunamis and everything else, see, we've got to stop doing that. We're getting too close to, you know, we're believing Hollywood. Your imagination runs wild on you because the reference that most people have came from Hollywood. It does not come from truth. The only way it can come from truth is if you have experienced the event. Otherwise, you're getting your visual imagery from Hollywood. Well, actually be stimulated this year going into 2017 so i'd give them about five years ash environment with black ash within the next three years within the next three years super storms are already beginning but they will actually become stronger and stronger um, during the during the well from now to 2017 food shortages are already taking place and they will no longer be able to hide it and that will reach a, that, that's going to reach a, a very high point, a, a noticeable point, probably about March of next year. Hail damage is going to increase significantly because of atmospheric conditions. They will manifest unusually large hail. Right? Right now, we have a chain of thunderstorms that is spanning all the way to from New Brunswick down to Texas. That's very slight, considering the moisture formations that we're looking at is only 2% complete. What happens when it reaches 50% completion? And that is to say, we're talking about ocean currents, evaporation, and everything else. See, when the Lord said in Matthew 24, right? Don't be afraid of the end of the world. I'm, I'm, let me, can I put something else in context for you guys? Because this should never... You shouldn't take this lightly. He said, when Jesus said, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars, right? He said, he said, see that ye not be troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. In other words, he said, don't be troubled. It's not the end. Don't be troubled at all. These things have to happen. He mentioned a bunch of other things and he always teaches us never to be troubled. It does not mean this is no big deal. There will be earthquakes and floods in diverse places. Let me give you something on floods. We have too much potential in the storm systems that we have now. The rainfall is going to be a disastrous thing. 